It's the Weather Extreme video. This is the morning edition for Wednesday, August 24th. I'm James Spann. Pretty typical August weather here through the weekend. Next week, the weather all depends on what's happening in the tropics. That's what everybody is talking about, and we're going to talk about it too. Here we go. Got ridging here across the deep south. Our weather will be very consistent for a while. Partly sunny, hot days, widely scattered storms in the afternoon. You know the deal. Starting off the day in the 70s, we'll expect a high in the low 90s in most spots today. On the watch warning map, excessive heat advisories west of the state, on the Mississippi Delta, North Louisiana, flash flood watches for parts of Missouri and Iowa. Severe weather possible today from Amarillo, Texas to much of Michigan, higher risks around Kansas City and St. Louis. Tomorrow, a marginal risk from El Paso to Pittsburgh. And on day three, a marginal risk for parts of the High Plains. This is the rain for the next five days. Ballot through Monday morning of next week, about one half inch. Notice the higher totals over South Florida. That's with potential Hermine. And over the next seven days, notice an increase over the Central Gulf from WPC. And that's under the idea that there might be some tropical mischief toward the middle of next week. We don't know that yet. In fact, let's just talk about the tropics. Here we go. Two systems on the board. Of course, the one everybody's fussing about is the 99L, which is near the Leeward Islands. But let's not forget Gaston in the eastern Atlantic. Looking pretty good. Estimated winds are at 70 miles an hour. This should become a hurricane today. Uh, Gaston will be moving north-northwest. Of course, when it gets up at that latitude, it typically recurves, and it should do that east of Bermuda. No threat to any landmass. So we're not going to worry too much about that. 99L seems to be getting a good old CDO this morning, a central dense overcast. But here's the deal. You know, until this thing gets a low-level circulation center, we won't know that the models can't initialize this thing. It just can't because it doesn't know where to put the center. So you're going to see these wild model solutions and everybody's going to be posting them. And yeah, we talk about them. But again, it's just until we get this thing organized and until we get a little bit of a sampling of the atmosphere, maybe by the uh, Gulf Stream research jet, these solutions will be very inconsistent. Now, the tropical models, which go out to about five days, they're, they're pretty tightly clustered, uh, passing north of Hispaniola, coming up across the Bahamas into South Florida. Uh, if it develops... There's still a chance this might not develop. Much ado about nothing, but a fair chance it will. Uh, of course, it could just be weak and be a rainmaker. It could dissipate somewhere along that track, or it might wind up in the Gulf and being a big problem. So let's look at the ensembles. This stuff will blow your mind. Here's the GFS ensemble. This is the OZ run. And the mean of the members, it's about a 20-member ensemble. The mean, it's the, the black dots. And the mean wants to recurve the thing, but you've got members that take it as far east as, or as far west as uh, Pensacola, but the majority of the members recurve this thing on the uh, coast of Florida with no threat to the Gulf. European, now let me just say, this is the 12Z run from yesterday. The OZ ensemble set is not in when I'm doing this update this morning, but you can see it's farther west. But don't notice the huge spread. You've got a couple of members that bring it into Mexico and some that keep it east of the United States. That's like we talked about. We, we don't have a circulation center. They don't know how to initialize this thing. It's just all over the board. And just for the fun of it, let's look at the Canadian. And the black line is the mean. But again, at this point, it's not that meaningful. The intensity forecasts. Most models do bring it up to tropical storm strength. Couple bring it up to a Category 1 hurricane. You got the outlier that brings it up to a Category 4 in five days. So, again, you know, we could just sit here and stare at this stuff all day long and, you know, play the model map game. But, but until we get a low-level center and get the thing organized and know a little more about the environmental conditions around it, this stuff's just going to be all over the board. Uh, we'll look at the deterministic uh, data here. This is coming off the GFS. Show you a bunch of maps as we go. This is the uh, 06C run, valid today at 1 o'clock. 594 heat ring on top of us. Hot, humid, and you know the deal. Maybe a storm in spots. 
her model not very aggressive. It's not showing much at 6 o'clock this evening. It'll probably be like yesterday. A lot of you will be dry, but a couple of neighborhoods could see a storm. Same thing tomorrow, low 90s, isolated storms. And the same thing Friday, no real change. Maybe a slight uptick in the number of scattered storms, but the overall pattern's the same. And the weekend, it's same old routine. This is Saturday and this is Sunday. Uh, low, maybe mid-90s in spots, hot, muggy, isolated storms. So let's go to next week, Monday. And this is where things get a little interesting with the tropics. You can see the GFS on this run as a weak tropical low over South Florida. Uh, nothing more than a rainmaker. Go to uh, Tuesday. We go back to the upper levels, and you can you got the ridge still in place. And if the ridge stays in place, that you know you're you're look for, looking for a weakness in that that might open up the door for that northward turn. And it's really hard to identify a weakness there. And again, the the GFS is a broad surface low near Tampa Bay. It really doesn't develop this thing. It's basically a rainmaker. So what does the European do? Dare we look? All right, this is Monday off the European. This is the OZ run, latest run we have. And uh, instead of a weak rainmaker, this has a more formidable tropical storm type looking feature Monday at midday over the open waters of the Gulf. Tuesday, not much of a northward component of motion. It stays way south of the Alabama Gulf Coast. And then Wednesday of next week, a week from today, it's got a hurricane near the Sabine Pass, the Texas-Louisiana border. So again, that's another interesting solution. And then Thursday, it moves it up into uh, North Louisiana. That's the European. Want to look at the Canadian just for fun? Oh, why not? We're playing at model map games. Uh, this is uh, Tuesday of next week, and it's got a tropical storm coming up towards southeast Louisiana. So again, you know, it's just simply too early to know. Nobody knows the ultimate track, destination, or intensity. Once we get this thing organized, better environmental conditions into the models, we will have an idea for you. We'll check the end of the forecast period. This is um, Friday of next week, September 2nd, into meteorological fall. GFS shows a trough coming along, and uh, there is potential hermine finally being picked up and taken out into the Atlantic. This thing might stay out there for a while. We'll, we'll see. But it's just going to be bewildering for a day or two still. Look at the numbers. If you're looking for that fresh autumn air coming down the pike, no. Uh, probably not for the next 15 days. Highs mostly in the low 90s and lows mostly in the low 70s. That's it for the Weather Extreme video this morning. We'll have notes in the blog. The next video here by 4 o'clock this afternoon. If you can't catch us this evening on the live stream or the television side, ABC 3340 News at 4, 5, 6, and 10 o'clock. Thanks for watching. Have a great day and God bless.